My name is Lech Moszynski. I'm professor in the Department of Food Science and Engineering College of Forestry for a change. So far, you've heard from engineers from the School of Forestry. I um, can only ca take a claim on, on uh, presenting this stuff because the list of co-authors, collaborators is so long that I had to fade it. Otherwise, it would have to take the entire slide. And what I'm going to talk about, actually what I was asked to talk about are three aspects of uh, projects that were either funded or inspired by TDI. So I'm, uh, a good portion of what I'm going to talk about is not being funded by TDI, but we need to talk about it in order to, to explain things that happened uh, lately. And there are three aspects, PP standing for Ponderosa Pine for mass timber panels, uh, global mass timber panels, so global outlook at the, uh, on the mass timber panel industry, uh, project and uh, circular uh, mass timber panel. Uh, I'm not going to be even able to give you even a list of uh, conclusions in flight for each of these projects. There's so many. So it's more like reporting on where we are right now, what we are doing and why, and uh, what you may expect if you contact us for details or uh, publications. So let's start with the Ponderosa Pine for a mass timber panel. The motivation for this is the observation that what we experience here at the Pacific Northwest, the forest fires um, are damaging not only the, the forest, but also communities. And one way of, of uh, trying to alleviate it is just removing, selectively harvesting smaller, uh, small diameter woods uh, to make more space and make forests res more resilient uh, against fire. Now, this generates a lot of small diameter logs. Um, many of them find the commercial uh, homes, but Ponderosa Pine no, does not find uh, a good commercial uh, home for itself. So the idea was to utilize this material in mass timber panels like CLT and see if we can find a good uh, outlet for this, something that we can build with these panels. Uh, and hopefully this would contribute to modular housing that can contribute to reconstruction of communities that have been ravaged by fire or other disasters or provide affordable housing and so on. So in a sense, like uh, changing the cycle from uh, what it is right now, right to a greener cycle where we can avoid this part and just uh, the, the excess fiber growing in our forest being redirected to something. The point is, the, the question is, is this even good for making a structural product, right? Ponderosa pine is not one of the um, species that you would uh, hear is famous for, for uh, structural products. And then what would be the, pro the products or the structures that we can build with this? And this is the prehistory. This is, uh, as I promised, None of these projects have been funded by uh, TDI. It's mostly uh, USDA uh, Forest Service Wood Innovation Programs, but they provide the, um, the context for what happened just recently. Uh, a big part of this, this large uh, Build Back Better with mass timber, of which uh, College of Forestry has this slice, Smart Forestry, 5 million, uh, to spend over four years. Uh, it's, I'm going to talk about it in, in a second. So let's start with this. We've been interested in building slowly uh, towards uh, looking at whether or not and in what, which way we can utilize this uh, of Ponderosa pine uh, harvested uh, in, in a selective way. Uh, and being produced in small logs. And, and uh, it goes in a couple of uh, a series of projects. At first, we are looking at hybrid cross laminated uh, timber where the ponderosa pine would just go to the cores. But this is first uninteresting. Whatever you put on the faces actually determines the properties. And second, this would pro provide outlet only for a small portion of what is out there. So everything since there, are projects that are focused on panels that are uh, produced exclusively from Ponderosa pine. Now, it just so happens that this year, uh, these three, four projects uh, 
got to the fruition. We graduated for with students with this two PhDs. Each of this project, this project generated like a PhD thesis and three publications. This project, uh, PhD thesis and four publications. Uh, this project, MS uh, uh, thesis and uh, two manuscripts uh, to be published. Right. Uh, this one. Uh, sorry, this one, three projects, this one, uh, master student, master thesis and two projects to be, uh, two, two uh, manuscripts to be published. Impossibility to give justice to, to all of this. But if we go just by the major takeaways, right? It begins with the project that uh, is busy with defining uh, project specific custom CLT grades for a purpose. Now, the background for this, the background for animation is that mass timber panels are not a commodity. You don't buy them in Home Depots, in warehouses. Uh, and even though, if, if this was the case, you can still engineer around, uh, say, weaker properties of, of uh, CLT made of, of ponder the pine. But here with mass timber panel, these are custom projects. So we can go both ways. We can either engineer around the properties or engineer the properties into the panel by engineering the, the layup properly. And this is what Sina did. And uh, the thing is the main uh, takeaway is Pandora's pine is not Douglas fir, right? Let's say that. Uh, the, but we can still build viable CLT with predictable properties. And this is what the engineer is carry for, right? You need to be, have predictable properties. No matter how weak they are, you can you can design around it, and then you can design layups uh, for stiffness and capacity to meet the demand of the of the project. This has been established. However, the lumber from selectively harvested small logs does not meet the uh, benchmarks uh, published already in, in NDS. If we take Ponderosa pine harvested commercially, white fir uh, harvested commercially, this is all fine, right? They meet the, the, the properties, you can, you can use them as they are. So for this, we do need to define these uh, properties and put them in the NDS as uh, Ponderosa pine asterisk or Westerwood asterisk or white, uh, uh, white, white fir uh, asterisk to allow the manufacturers to use the species in CLT. It's a thing to remember. The other related to this um, in on the burning right uh, tests uh, or the fire performance of CLT produced of this ponderosa pine. One alarming thing is that uh, it burns faster. So you see here like the progress of charring for the ponderosa pine uh, panels, five layers, right? Compared to the NDS uh, or EN, they are very similar uh, metrics, guidelines for engineers, how to provide the fire safety uh, or fire ratings for that many hours, right? Um, that, that is needed. And ponderosa pine uh, apparently chars faster than the, the species that were used to generate this number. So something has to be done about it. The next uh, of these projects, and again, going very quickly, I did not mention, uh, as I should, the name of the uh, graduate student here on, on this one, uh, Sina Jahedi, here, Sang Young Hong. Uh, the next one is uh, work done by Sujit Bandari. This project is going to be talked about in greater detail by Maria Paula. <laughs> so I'm going to, to skip here. But again, um, this was looking at the, a CLT made of this material in the context of specific uh, building application. We are looking at a low demand uh, end use of this uh, low rise modular structures uh, and Sujit's um, project was addressing a couple aspects of this. The main takeaways that are important again for building up to the new project that I'm going to talk about is that uh, Ponderosa pine CLT can hold a variety of connectors. You can model it, it's the performance predictable. Uh, you can model it in support of design and the rapid deployment models are viable um, option for the outlet of this kind of material. Boom, the rest is going to be in uh, Maria Paula's uh, talk. 
now the li latest of this uh, of this uh, series of uh, projects uh, funded by uh, Wood Innovation is performance of um, performance of connectors, uh, and here specifically the uh, CLT here was the ponderosa pine all ponderosa pine CLT. And again, the main uh, takeaway: most of the of the thesis was on the um, methodological side. How do you even test uh, connectors in fire? I'll skip that. Uh, the main takeaway here is the performance of floor-to-wall connectors is controlled by charring. So it is important to know the rate of charring in order to predict how of the, how these connectors are going to perform. And this, as we know already, Fondosa pine is peculiar. It chars a little faster than we used to think of, of wood charring. And this are, leads us to this uh, big build, big back uh, better with mass timber. Uh, thing of which, as I said, we have a slice um, dubbed smart forestry paving way for forest restoration to mass timber. So it takes care of both ends of it, making the forests uh, safer and uh, providing mass, uh, raw material for mass timber panels. The lead on this is uh, Woody Chang. Um, I'm not sure if he's going to talk about the other aspects of this uh, today. So just in case, Yes, super. So just on case, uh, the context of this is improve the safety and efficiency of forest restoration work, uh, support workforce development, uh, revitalize uh, forest development uh, in rural communities. Most exciting for me is what not listed in, in here is what Woody does is assessment of how much of this raw material is there which is important for the potential investors. I mean, it's, and it's not like the conventional estimation of how much uh, of value fiber you have on forest, uh, on commercial plots, because we need to think of how many, what is the acreage that is already signed for the restoration? And now how much of this wood, of this uh, log standing in this forest are marked for the thinnings and then what is the value of this thing that is marked for thinning? Because this is the potential raw material for uh, this, this uh, ponderosa pine uh, CLT. So here, this is all uh, combined in this uh, secure low value wood for the mass timber industry. This is how the envisioned output looks like. I just highlighted the part that I'm uh, responsible for. Uh, actually Woody and I are responsible for. So this is determining this design values of restoration tree species for NDS. This is the part that was missing that I signaled at, the, at, the, at first. When you selectively harvest small logs, there is like more of the juvenile wood that would be in commercial harvest. This is what makes the uh, lumber produced from these logs not meet the NDS uh, benchmarks that, that are currently on the books. So we need to create this asterisk value for, for this. And then evaluating mass timber manufacturing technology uh, with narrow size lumber lamination. This goes back to the fact that we are aiming small diameter lumber in order to cut it into, uh, or small diameter logs, in order to cut it into lumber uh, in a uh, sustainable way with good recovery, you need to consider narrows and thinner, uh, thinner um, lumber. And for this, um, we think uh, one way without changing much in current PRG320, which is the product standard for uh, mass timber panels currently in North America, uh, we can just reconstitute uh, laminations up to one foot uh, wide from these narrows uh, that emerge from, uh, from small logs and send them to, to manufacturers. We hope this is still going to uh, be economical, vi economically viable. So if we think of the expected impact, right? A larger view of all of this activity. If you, if you hypothetically like um, produce about 100 of modular units uh, that use exclusively this restoration ponderosa pine panels, um, low 
uh, low rise um, modular, modular structures. You can utilize approximately 33 million uh, board feet of restoration uh, pine lumber. This is uh, translates to a treatment of about 460 additional acres of treated forest land, right? And uh, retaining or creating about 300 uh, jobs in lumber industry, create extra jobs around this industry. So there are like aspects and uh, beyond just engineering, engineering uh, consequences of, of what we are trying to accomplish in here. That much for the Ponderosa pine for, for CLT. Uh, moving to the second part. And this part is partially funded by um, uh, two different grants, one that expired already, the other that we are uh, just at the end of, uh, of spending from um, uh, ARS uh, funds uh, being, being granted through TDI. Um, the purpose of this is uh, is still relatively new and small and small industry that we are dealing with mass, mass timber panel industry. Most of what happens, most of the development happens in Alpine region in Europe, right? Um, even with this, we are still still very good. I think there are things that we can learn from looking both at the place where everything started in Alpine region in Europe, but also at other places where the industry is still young and uh, trying to start either from scratch or with very meager uh, with very meager uh, uh, pre-existing uh, pre-existing uh, um, precedents. So we look at the structure of the potential uh, production profile, internal diversity, competitiveness, approaches to innovativeness and uh, perceived barriers uh, to future expansion, both in this core region where it all started in, and in new, uh, new uh, places. The prehistory for this, uh, again, project that were funded on the shoestring at first and then gradually been building up all of this activity has been funded by TDI. Since the last time I uh, communicated this in 2019, this was our last TDI um, symposium, we added a couple more uh, targeted field trips and we uh, administered two more um, surveys, global surveys. All of this uh, gives us a sea of data for which we don't have a time spent to, to go in detail. But uh, if you have any questions, there are publications and um, data that, that we could discuss. We like to discuss the um, outcomes of what we see in the industry in terms of regions rather than individual countries or individual manufacturers. So this is how we parse the, the um, world. The most interesting is the core region it's like this Alpine Europe, meaning like Northern Italy, Switzerland, Austria, Czechs, they do not really lie in the uh, Alps, but uh, Holzkurier, one of our favorite uh, data sources, uh, places in there. And then uh, Southern Germany have uh, uh, some of, of the Alpine region. These are all CLT producing countries. You see here other CLT producing car countries in Europe or mass timber producing countries in Europe. Um, These data points here just show the dynamics of the increase of the production uh, in this Alpine region mostly. Uh, we try to capture uh, stuff and confront the green or projections, browns or actual numbers uh, that are later on. Now for for a uh, reference, this would be the uh, California, the outline of California in the same scale, seventh economy in the world, right? Uh, so if you think about the potential of North America in here, uh, there's like uh, a lot that can be still squeezed on the West Coast when you add Oregon here, Washington, and other, uh, other, other states that, that uh, produce or may produce CLT. And we are still not going to match what happens in Central Europe. Now, this is to say the, the trade uh, journals are kind of tricky source for information. If you look at this, like Corona is not going not stop. 
it's like Pythia being asked of the for the future. Okay, I'm being told from two sources that we are at the end of here. So let me just quickly say um, surveys or the other sources, but this is like diminishing uh, return for the effort. This is our first survey, 45% uh, return rate. Second survey, um, we asked more companies to participate, the uh, participation rate diminished. Now the third survey, this is the coronavirus survey, right? Um, like 10%, 12 of 122 companies that we are trying to engage. So there are some limitations in, the, in looking on this. The most valuable way of, of get, getting information is actually being there and asking, but this cannot give you a snapshot. You cannot be in all places in one, word, uh, one year. You have to, to build it. It's like more of a longitudinal uh, study. So the, our approach is just to combine all, all of the sources uh, together. Um, I'm going to snap through this. This is to say with all of this development, it's still a boutique uh, industry. We are producing like one eightieth of what the globally, right? Of what the global plywood industry uh, produces. And we develop smart ways based on all of this information, how to compare the potential for regions. So here you see like unit uh, area, representing what happens in the United States uh, or in North America. You can even parse it more specifically, California or something, compared to other regions in the world. And then you see that there is like substantial potential for building more manufacturing power in uh, West Coast or in uh, North America for mass timber industry. Third, uh, this is the funniest part. The graduate student here is Namuk and he's uh, having a um, poster here so he can tell you more about it. The tricky part is about it. We talk a lot about uh, circularity, but we don't practice this very well. Actually, the very thing that has been surprised, CLT concrete, right? That is so good for engineering is terrible if you think of uh, reusing these panels. The self-tapping screws that are so easy and make the construction so easy are terrible in terms of perspective for proper deconstruction. And many of these uh, practices that are available to other types of constructions are not going to work well with mass timber panels. The best way would be to do very little in resizing, comminution and so on, just using the panels as they are. But this is very easy to say, not very uh, easy to practice. This would require involvement in the design and designing for circularity from the very beginning. So this is where the this part of the supply chain would uh, need to work with this part of the supply chain for mass timber panels. And I refer you to the uh, poster by Namiuk that is out there. Um, one way that we envisioned learning about the, the deconstruction, cost of deconstruction and difficulties would be looking exactly at this project over here. Very short cycle. Then they need to deconstruct the, the test constructions. Um, unfortunately, there are like delays for this. These are our partners who provided funding and support for us. Let's talk about it when we have more time.